So we buy the frames in, they come in kits, they're normally quite well made. You get the odd one that's uh, that's broken, but generally speaking they're, they're pretty much ready to go. And we just have to assemble them. So that's the parts for the frame, and that's the foundation that we're going to put in the frame. I'm going to go through and make this frame up, and as I go I'm going to pass on whatever I can. Uh, the old time beekeepers find this very boring. Um, but for the new beekeepers, this might be quite a useful uh, lesson on how to put together your frames. And hopefully I can pass on some tips. So the first thing we have to do is take the ends of the frame here. You'll see there's clearly two ends. There's, there's two openings there and one there. And they plug into here. Sometimes they go in easily. Sometimes they don't, depending on who you've bought them from and how good a fit they are. The key thing you have to remember, you'll only make the mis mistake a couple of times before you get bored of it is that the groove has to go on the inside and I'll put money on it. You'll get that wrong at some point. This one didn't want to go in too easily, so I just turn it over and I give it a, little, a light tap on the top just to knock that in. Now the key thing to tapping it is not to tap on the outside here because these lugs break off very easily. And um, if you don't break them, you may well have weakened them and they're the bits that break when your frame gets stuck in the hive and you're having to sort of prise it out, these are the bits that break. The other reason you want this frame to go down right the way down into there, it keeps the frame straighter, but the main thing is it gives the, the frame extra strength because it's seated properly. We then have what I always used to call frame pins, but the beekeepers call gimp pins. I'm not quite sure where the name comes from. We have a series of gimp pins. And what we do is we put a pin through the top here. And what I do is I put this pin in, angled like that. And this one in, angled the same. And I turn the frame over that way. And I do the same from the other side. Now, there's two advantages to that. The first is the pins are never going to meet each other in the middle, which is never a good idea. It's not a huge problem, but it just makes your job more difficult. But the other thing is, when you look down on the pins, they're covering a larger area in the wood, which makes them stronger. So with one pin going that way and another pin going that way, we've got a much larger area for those pins to exert pressure on. These top bars, or bottom bars as they are, because they're upside down at the moment, just slot one in there. These are the important nails, because if your nail goes through into that groove, you won't get your uh, foundation in later on. So make sure these ones are nice and straight. And we just knock in a pin either end. Now the trick here is, you see the nail going off true, stop. Don't be tempted to just keep banging it in and have a pair of pliers ready. You can pull it out, put it in straight. Once you've banged it in and it comes out the side or into the groove there, it's much, much more difficult to get it out. Then you'll see that there's a groove that's been pre-cut into here. You just break that out. Now, because I'm a bit OCD, I have to break off all the sprue. It's just one of those things. It, it kind of makes the bar go a bit crooked when you put it in if not um, so I tend to just take away all the all the bits in here it's not a huge problem but as I say if you're a bit OCD so on the foundation you'll notice this is wired foundation so this has had a wire put through it and heated so it sinks into the beeswax and there's two hoops on the top three hoops on here and what you do is you bend the hoops and you put the three hoops onto the top bar. Now, sometimes, depending on who you get these from, sometimes they fit straight in. This one is such a tight fit that what will happen is when I put it in, it will bow like that. And that kind of messes up your, um, your comb when it's built. So the best thing to do is just take a tiny piece off. And the trick here is to take tiny pieces off. You can always cut another tiny piece off. But you can't add it back on. 
so you take a tiny bit off and, they, and again don't push down too hard there it's very easy to squash the uh, foundation and take it off and you'll probably find that with each batch you take off pretty much the same amount each time you'll get the hang of it fairly quick and that slots in and is nice and flat and you'll see that the loops are along the bottom here so you take the bar that you broke off and put it back in and squeeze it down and what that does is it holds the foundation in so I'm not in shot there I suspect when I look back through this video most of it will be out of shot and then you knock the gimp pins in the idea being that the pin goes through the wire loop almost impossible to get that foundation out once those have gone in and you do one per loop so that's three pins there that and the last thing is putting that final bar in you'll usually find that where they've cut off the wire there they're the bits that stick out and they can be quite sharp so just keep an eye on your fingers and I find the trick is hold that in while you put this end in and then sort of stretch this out while you go along and then bring it back in there it's very easy to push it down and fold the foundation along here which you don't really want to do the other trick with the foundation is to try and keep it at the right temperature because I'm in a conservatory at the moment and if it was warm and sunny I'd be virtually pouring that in. It makes life much more difficult when the foundation is really soft. Likewise if it's stone cold it's difficult to do. These last pins not quite so important to get straight because if they do go through that middle bar your foundation is already in. And there we go, one finished frame.